Hello everyone, I'm Shashank Tilwali. I'm a customer success architect here at MuleSoft. MuleSoft offers you a lot of different connectors out of the box to connect to various applications. We also offer you certain premium connectors. But what if you don't have a connector to connect to a target application? That's where Custom Connector comes to the rescue. In this Friends of Mac series, I'm going to walk you through the journey of how to build the custom connectors and also contribute to the exchange. Let's get started. Before we get into the details of how to build a connector, let's take a quick intro into the concepts. A connector is an interface that helps you or facilitates the connection between sender and the receiver. For example, in our day-to-day -day use, we use an HDMI connector that connects our laptop to the monitor. From the user perspective, the HDMI cable has really abstracted the user from the details of the underlying technology. The user does not need to know how the HDMI works or how does the HDMI compresses or decompresses the digital data, nor does it need to know what kind of protocol is being used. The HDMI cable has made it extremely easy for the user to connect and do the intended task. Similarly, in the MuleSoft world, a connector helps you to connect the system of record to the MuleSoft application or the API. The system of record can be a database or various different SaaS and non-SaaS applications. AnyPoint connectors are reusable components that you can use to integrate your Mule application with third-party APIs, SaaS, or non-SaaS systems. Some examples are database connector, Salesforce, NetSuite, Workday, so on and so forth. Out of the box, MuleSoft offers you 200 odd connectors, and it also provides you with certain premium connectors. Connectors offers you a lot of advantages. To start with, it redu reduces the complexity as you can connect to the target system without knowing the underlying details just like our HDMI example. It simplifies authentication. It also helps you to transform the data as it infers the metadata for the target system that helps you during the transformation. And finally, it offers you a much easier maintenance. Mule 4 provides you with a well-defined framework or Mule SDK. The SDK can be used to create new modules or connectors which you could then add to the Mule application. These connectors or modules can be accessed via the AnyPoint exchange. The basic module structure of SDK is being shown onto the screen. To start with, components. Components are the key to the functionality of a module. Given a set of parameters, they can be executed to produce or alter messages in a flow. If you take an example of an HTTP connector, think of its operations as components. HTTP offers you operations like request, listener, so on and so forth. Configuration. Configuration are set of parameters that affect the behavior of the module or the connector. For example, within the HTTP connector, we create a configuration with parameters like port and base path, which can affect the behavior of the connector. Connection provider. The module connection provider is responsible for creating, disconnecting, and describing the connection so that the runtime can handle it properly. And finally, you have parameters, which are the most granular elements of the module, which is used throughout the framework. For example, during the use of DB connector, we define the values like input parameter, SQL query, so on and so forth. Building connector with MuleSoft SDK is a fairly straightforward process. Once you decide that you need to build a connector, the whole process is broken up into four different phases. Prepare, design and develop, deploy or install, and share. In the prepare phase, we use Maven to generate a project structure, which will provide us with the bare bones of all the required libraries and the classes that is needed to build a connector. Depending on what target system you're connecting to, you may update the POM file with the required third-party library. For example, in this video, I would be showing you how to create a connector to communicate with Oracle Cloud's object storage APIs. For this, I'm going to add the Oracle Cloud library dependency to the POM file. We would then clean the project and also make it ready to import it into the AnyPoint Studio by running few Maven commands. In the develop stage, we are going to implement the flow based on our design using the libraries that we just imported. In the deploy, we install the connector to the local repository so that any Mule project that wants to make use of it simply would need to add 
the connector dependency to its POM file. And finally, you may share your connector with the community or within the organization by uploading it into the exchange. Next, we need to make sure that we have JDK 8, Apache Maven 3.3.9, IDE of your choice, AnyPoint Studio or IntelliJ, and AnyPoint account credentials if you wish to upload the connector to the exchange. To start with, I'm going to run the first Maven command to generate a project structure and the second Maven command to make sure that I'm able to import it into the AnyPoint Studio. Let's head to the terminal window. The first Maven command that we're going to execute is essentially going to generate the project structure. It's going to go through a series of configuration parameters like the name of the extension, the extension's group ID, the extension's artifact ID, the extension version, and the package in which you want to have all your connector configuration or connector classes to exist. Once the basic project structure is created, open the POM file that exists within the project structure. Update the POM file with the required libraries that you wish to use for creating the connector. In my case, I am going to update the POM file with Oracle Cloud dependency. Once the dependency added, execute the second Maven command. This Maven command makes sure that all the required libraries are installed into the local repository and makes it ready for the import to the AnyPoint Studio. In the AnyPoint Studio, head to File, Open Project from File System, and here give the location of the project that was just created. You are ready to go as part of your development. Once the project is successfully imported into the AnyPoint Studio, take a quick look at the Package Explorer. The project has certain Java files like file sending with configuration, connection, connection provider, extensions, and operations. These files were created by Maven and makes use of SDK's object model. These classes also has some basic code into it. If deployed and used within Mule project without any changes, this is what you can expect to, to see as shown in the screenshot. To start with, the Java file ending with extensions.java is the entry point to your connector. The Java file ending with operations.java has all the operations that this connector can perform. For example, in this screenshot, retrieve info and say hi are the two operations currently exposed by this connector. The connector also needs configuration, which you may want to share across all the operations. Any such configuration can be developed within the Java file ending with configuration.java. The classes given in the project structure can be modified based on a design as well. For example, if there is no connection related handling required for your connector, you may choose to remove connection and connection provider related source code files. In this demo, I am showcasing the use of MuleSoft SDK to create a connector to communicate with Oracle Cloud. Given a message within the MuleSoft, my goal is to create an object into Oracle Cloud's object storage and also to create a bucket to store those objects. Hence, I would define two operations, create object and create bucket within my operations class. The connectivity to Oracle Cloud depends on user specific connection parameters that will be mentioned within the configuration file. For example, user ID, fingerprint, so on and so forth. These operations will also have operation specific parameters like bucket name, content, region, etc. so on and so forth. Let's get to AnyPoint Studio and see how we can develop this. What you see here is the package structure that we had imported into the AnyPoint Studio. And these are some of the Java source file that was created as part of the Maven command that we ran earlier. The first source file that I modified is Oracle Cloud Configuration.java. This source file should contain all the parameters that is needed for your MuleSoft application to connect to the target application and should also contain all the parameters that is required to be shared by all the operations within this connector. MuleSoft provides you with a lot of different Java annotations that gives you a lot of flexibility in designing a connector. 
For example, within this source file, any configuration that you would like to make it visible to the user should be annotated with add parameter. The display name annotation provides you a way to label your parameter that the developers would see while using the connector. The order signifies the order in which the parameter would be shown to the user. The example annotation will provide the developer with a hint that what kind of values this particular parameter would take. The second file which you would need to modify at minimum is Oracle Cloud Operations.java. This file exposes all the operations that is required by this connector. For my demo, I expose two operations, create object and create bucket. Each of this operation accepts the configuration along with certain operation specific parameters. For example, my create bucket or create object takes parameters like configuration along with operation specific parameters like bucket, contents, object name, so on and so forth. The code that you see here is specific to my target application. And in this code, essentially I'm getting the content from the MuleSoft integration and creating an object within the object storage of Oracle Cloud. There are certain other Java files as well within my project, which I'm not using and which I would be deleting from the project. The final step before we compile the project is to create an icons folder and provide them with an icon.svg file that would essentially be the icon that you would see when you drag and drop the connector from the palette onto the MuleSoft integration. The next step in the connector development is the deploy stage. In this, we would compile and install the connector within the Maven's local repository. You can use the maven install command to deploy the connector. Any maven project that wants to make use of the custom connector simply needs to update its POM file with the connector dependency. Once these two steps are completed, you can develop your mule flow and test the integration. Head to your terminal window where we would be installing this connector to the local repository. In this terminal window, run the maven install command. Once the installation is successful, head to your AnyPoint Studio. What you see here on the screen is the POM file of the connector project. And the values that has been selected were essentially given when we had generated the project structure. To use this connector, copy these values and update the POM file of the Mule project where you want to use the connector as a dependency onto the screen. You should now see the connector as part of the mule palette with the two operations that we had designed, create bucket and create object. In this sample project, I quickly created a mule flow in which I'm using create object operation. In this operation, I updated the module configuration with the parameters that will be used to connect to Oracle Cloud. I also updated certain operation specific parameters that would be used. This demo project has been designed to accept the values for the content and the bucket from the query string. To test, I run my test project within the browser. Head to the browser window and execute the URL. Please note, I am passing here the object content and the object name within the query string. Once the process has been successfully executed, head to your Oracle Cloud account. Here you can see within the bucket, the values that I had executed from the URL has now been successfully imported or created into the Oracle Cloud's object storage. The final stage is submitting the connector to the exchange, which is an optional step. To contribute the connector to the exchange, you need to make few changes to the maven setting.xml and to the connector POM file. You start by adding the AnyPoint account details in the maven setting.xml. Next, in the connector's POM file, you need to change the group ID to the MuleSoft organization ID and also add your repository details where you would like to contribute before running the maven command. Open the settings.xml of your maven repository. 
And here, within the server section, give your AnyPoint account details along with a unique ID. This ID would be used in the connector POM file. Next, in the connector's POM file, update the group ID to the MuleSoft organization ID. This information is available within your AnyPoint account. Next, add the repository section to the POM file. Here, make sure that the ID within your repository is the one that you give within your settings.xml. Finally, head back to the terminal window where you run the maven clean deploy command. Once this deployment is successful, head to your AnyPoint exchange. There you should be able to see your connector. Thank you for watching this Friends of Max video. Please feel free to leave comments or watch the links given below. We have other Friends of Max videos as well that could be of your interest. I look forward to see you again. Goodbye.